Hey, Lamed Beis, Lamed Beis. It's um, 10 lines down, the Flukta. We thank Hashem that we're able to learn. This is about learning. We should have the base of Migdash immediately. Hey. Should be kind of see Okay, the Gemara here says, Oh, it's, um, uh, it's about 10 lines down. The line starts with Shem Gemara, it says, Oh, but we were discussing a, an, an interesting machlaikis between Rabbi Yaisi and Rabbi Shimon regarding Yisr Chal al If something is prohibited already and then another prohibition shows up, so does it become doubly prohibited? So um, Rabbi Yaisi said yes, Rabbi Shimon said no. The example was that if there was a person that his, um, let's say Reuven and Shimon, we're married to Rachel, to Leah and Rachel. Reuben's married to Leah, Shimon's married to Rachel. So um, Shimon, the brothers and two brothers married to marry two sisters. So then um, when Reuben marries Leah, Leah becomes prohibited to Shimon because it's his brother's wife. It's Aisha's uh, Ach. Then Shimon marries Rachel. Then it beca- Leah becomes his wife's sister. So it's a So now there's two prohibitions. If Shimon then goes and lives with Leah, does he violate one or violate two? So we explained yesterday that there's a difference between an Isser Maisif and an Isser Kailo. Rashi spells it out beautifully over here in Rashi, the Brahmaskal Isser Maisif. Uh, it's like towards the bottom of the lines. He says like this. Uh, let's give the example. Reuven marries Leah. Who is prohibited to Leah now? All of Reuven's brothers. It's his brother's wife. All of Reuven's brothers, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Hudi, Sachazon, they're all prohibited. Then Shimon goes and marries Rachel. What gets added to Leah? Well, Leah was already prohibited to Shimon. He was one of the brothers. The only thing that gets added to Leah, well, actually nothing gets added to Leah now because it's, she was already prohibited to, to Shimon because Shimon was one of the brothers. But what does get added is that not Leah gets prohibited. Not Leah gets prohibited, but Bilha and Zilpa. Ruben Shimon Levi, did I explain that? Ruben Shimon Levi, who they're all prohibited to Leah at the original marriage of Ruben to Leah, the brother's wife. Yeah, divorce. So now, when Rach, when uh, Shimon marries Rachel, so now, <coughs> what what prohibition gets added on to Leah? Leah turns out to be his wife's sister, but she was already prohibited. So in order, unless the, there's like an umbrella uh, prohibition here, then Leah is going to remain with the original prohibition and not anything added. So what, what does get added here is that Bilha and Zilpa now become prohibited also. But that's not an increase to Leah. That's only an increase of more people that become prohibited because Shimon is now married to one of the sisters, Rachel. But Leia was always originally, uh, th- there's no increase. It's not called the Isser Maisif. This is called the Isser Kailo. I should have said this one second. The other way goes like this. Shimon marries um, Rachel. Oh, Leia is prohibited. It's his wife's sister. Then Ruvain marries Leia. Now Leia is prohibited for a second reason. It's his brother's wife. But the prohibition on Leah that was always on Shimon is now Leah gets added pro- prohibitions because Levi and Yehuda, Yisachar and Zvulan are also prohibited to Leah. So the prohibition on Leah is now increased, not, not, over, more, not over more women, but over more men. <laughs> so more people are now prohibited to to, to Leah. 
Uh, really, the difference comes out is who do you look at, the men or the women in, the, in both cases, which if it's Isra Maisa versus Kaila. So the women and men won't be considered Maisa, won't be considered Kaila. Yeah, yeah it's not, it really doesn't have to do with men or women. It has to do with, um, it has to do with the, it, it, when we had this sugya at, originally, this was in Masechta, um, Masechus uh, Chulen. And over there, we were discussing if a piece of chalev comes from an animal that's nevela. And if now there's more meat that's aser. Originally, it was aser anyways, because it was chalev. And now it's nevela. So there's more meat that's aser, but there's no increase on this itself. And then we've said, but let's say he eats it on sha- he eats it on Yom Kippur or something. You know, so now there's more. Yeah, anyway, there, there was a whole um, three blot on, about Isser Maisif, Isser Kaila. I mean, what we said over here was that Rabbi Yaisi holds of Isser Maisif, but he doesn't hold of Isser Kaila. Turns out, Beplukta, this is not so simple because there's really a machlaikis about this. The Itmar, we have a statement. Zor Shishimish Peshabbos. If you have someone that's a Yisrael or a Levi is not a Kayan. So he's not allowed to do Malacha on Shabbos. It's not allowed to do malacha at all in the base of Migdash. And on Shabbos, he's not allowed, allowed to do any malacha. What happened was he does both. He serves in the base of Migdash, which that's he was prohibited even during the week. And now on Shabbos, he does something that was prohibited on Shabbos. If he would be a Kayan, it would be permissible, but he's not a Kayan. So, he's Chaya for two things. Two things, a non kayan serving in the base of Migdash, and he also violated Shabbos. Bar Kapara says he's only chayav one. Let's take a look. Kafetz Rebchia v'nishpa. Rebchia jumps in and he makes a swear. Ha'avayda. By the temple service. That's his oath. Kach shamati mi Rebbe. I heard clearly from Rebbe Shtayin. He chayav two. Kafetz Bar Kapara v'nishpa. Bar Kapara jumps in and says, no, he swears. Ha'avayda. Kach shamatim Rebbe achas. The only chayav one. Hischol Rebchia Ladun. So Rebchia begins to explain what the issues are here. He says, Shabbos l'kol ne'asara. Originally, Shabbos was forbidden. You can't do any work on Shabbos. Okay. However, Keshehutsha b'mikdash. When in the base of Migdash, they said that you can do work on Shabbos, you can offer sacrifices on Shabbos. So there is an exemption in the base of Migdash to do Malacha. That was only for Kayanim. So, Kayanim allowed to do work and not someone that's not a Kayan. So, Yeshkam Yishim Zoros, Yeshkam Yishim Shabbos. I have two malachas going on here. One is two of two uh, prohibitions. One is that he served in the temple and he's not a Kayan. Another one that he served in the temple and it's on Shabbos. He did a malach on Shabbos. Hischel bar kapara ladun. Bar kapara says one second. Shabbos the kal nesara. Shabbos was originally prohibited. You're not allowed to do work on Shabbos. Kishahutra ben Mikdash. When they allowed work in the temple. Hutra. They allowed it. In Kanel Azaris. There is no Malach of Shabbos. I know this fellow was not allowed to perform that labor. But that was because he is not a Kayan. But the labor itself was, was permitted. Okay. We don't have it clear yet that this has to do with Issachal Alisser and Issachal Alinas. You have to wait. This, the Gemara is going to take us through with this journey through this uh, we have another two cases uh, where they where they argue, and then the Gemara is going to going to get into what what is the basis for the machlekes. Next case. Yeah, that's going to show up later. It's going to show up. What about Chita Bazar? Isn't that kosher? Yeah, Shrit Bazar. Yeah. Yeah. You're, ju- you're jumping to a conclusion that we're dealing with Shrita. 
if it would be shechita, you're right. You're right. The Gemara is going to go through that actually. If it's shechita, you have a good point. Yeah, in mechaven to the Gemara. Yeah, is a shechita considered avoid? Let's see. It's good. That's going to be on lamed gimel lamed beis. I think the Gemara is going to discuss if we're dealing with shechita. Very good. Okay, the next point is that you, you remember from the Gemara Brachas that Shritik Sher Bazar, that was Shmuel's claim to Eli. But, uh, okay, Balmum, next case, Balmum Shashimish Betoma. Balmum, a Kayan that's a Balmum. A Balmum, he has a blemish. He's not allowed to do the Avaida. And he's also Tomei. Oh, two problems. It's not allowed to do. Uh, it's not allowed to do that way either. Reb Chiyaimer, Reb Chia says, I, I didn't point out that there's machlekas here. Reb Chia and Bar Kapara. These are two students of Rebbe, and each one is claiming that Rebbe told them something else. So Bar Kapara was a student of Rebbe, and Reb Chia is a student of Rebbe. This is this is like the the middle generation between Tanoim and Amiraim. So. Rabchia, Rabchia was the author of the Brises, of the Tesefta, right? Rabchia and Rabbeisha. And Bar Kapara has his own uh, set of, Tan, Tani Bar Kapara has his own set of Brises. Okay, so Rabchia says, Chayev Shtayim, Bar Kapara Imeyena Chayev Alachas. It's not, it's, the, everyone is consistent here. It's, uh, it's set up. Rabchia holds that Chayev 2, Bar Kapara says Yechayev 1. Kafetz Rabchia Venishpa. Rabchia jumps in and he makes an oath. Ha'avayda. By the temple service, Kach Shematim Rebbe, I heard from Rebbe, Shtayim, Yechayev too. What are the two? Balmon doing Navaida and someone that's Tommy doing Navaida. Kavitz Bar Kapar Vanishpa, Havaida, Kach Shematim Rebbe Achas, by the temple service, the only Chayev one, I heard from Rebbe. Hiskel Reb Chia Laden, so Reb Chia uh, begins to explain what his logic is. Tuma Lakal Nesar. Tuma is prohibited to do the service if it's if the person's tummy. Kishuhutra b'mikdash, if it's a carbon seber, and it's allowed to be done, carbon pesach or, or carbon seber, that where the, everyone is tummy, they're allowed to do the service, even though there's tumma. But that was etel kayinim tamimim hutra. That was only for kayinim that are not a balmum. La kayinim tamimim hutra v'leila balimumim. So it's only for kayanim that are not a balmum that are allowed to do the service. Yesh kamishim balimum, yesh kamishim tumma. This fellow that was a balmum, the exemption that allows the temple service to be performed, even though there's impurity, was only for everyone else, not for him. Because he's a balmum. So now we committed two violations. Hiskel bar kapara laden. So bar kapara jumps in. He says, Tuma Lakal Nasara. Tuma was originally prohibited. Kishuhutra Bimikdash Hutra. But it was became allowed because if the entire congregation is Tame, you're allowed to bring the service, you're allowed to bring the sacrifice anyway. Ain't kan elamishum balmum. So there's only one prohibition here. It's a balmum. Zarsha Achal Bamalika. It's an interesting case. One of the the um, services in the temple was for the Kayan to kill a, a, the bird with his nail through the nape, through the back of the neck. It wasn't the shechita that was done from the front. It was done through the back, the back of the neck. Now, if that would be done outside the temple, that would be a nevela. That would be a, a non-kosher uh, uh, animal. But in the base of Megdash, it's permitted. You're supposed to do it like that. So now, let's say someone that's not a kayan eats this bird that was Malika was done on it. Reb Chia Merchayev Stein. Reb Chia says he's Chayev too. Bar Kapara I mean Chayev Alachas. Bar Kapara says no, you're Chayev one. They're, they're consistent with their with their opinions. Kafetz Reb Chia Benishma. Reb Chia jumps in and he takes the oath. Avayda. Kach Shemat Mi Rebbe. By the temple service, I heard from Rebbe Shtayim. Kafetz Bar Kapara Benishma. Avayda. Kach Shemat Mi Rebbe Achas. I heard from Rebbe one that the only Chayev one. His for Reb Chia Laden. Reb Chia begins to explain. Nevela, Lakal Nasara, 
a bird that's not slaughtered properly is called nevela. It's prohibited to everyone. When it became allowed in the temple to do malika, and we're calling this nevela, that is nevela is permissible. That's a kayanim hutcher. That was only for the kayanim. Lakayanim hutcher v'leila zarim, but not for the strangers, not for the Yisrael and the Levi. Yesh kamishim zaras, yesh kamishim malika. I have a problem. First of all, he ate it and he wasn't allowed. And it's also a nevela. It's also malika. It wasn't shechita. This called bar kapara lad, the nevela lakal nesar. Bar kapara says no. Nevela was originally prohibited to everyone. Kishutcha b'mikdash hutcha. When it became allowed in the temple, it became allowed in Kanal Mishim Zaris. The only problem is who ate it? The wrong person. Not that it wasn't kosher, but it was just the wrong person. Now is where the Gemara begins to explain why are we bringing this uh, story in. It says, B'maika Miflagi, we're on top of Lamed Gimel. What is the machlaikis between Reb Chia and Bar Kapara? Gemara explains, B'isra Kailal Vali B'dir we're dealing with the Isser Kailal, and we're following the view of Rabbi Yaisi. Because if we go back to what we learned yesterday, we had an opinion of Rabbi Yaisi, and we had the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. We spoke about a sister-in-law. That's a sister-in-law in both ways, because Ruvain married Leah, and so Shimon can't marry Leah, because that's his sister-in-law. And Shimon married Rachel, and he can't marry Leah, because that's a sister-in-law, two types of sister-in-laws, brother's wife, and wife's sister. So Rabbi Yaisi says, if he does live with Leah, Reuven is not alive, it's not an Eish Sish over here. Um, if he does live with Leah, and there was no mitzvah of Yibam, which there is in the mitzvah of Yibam because it's his wife's sister. Um, if, uh, if he does live with Leah, Rabbi Yaisi says, chai of two. And Rabbi Shimon says, you only chai of one. Every time. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, Reb Shimon said, you only chai of one, which one? Well, it depends who married who first. That was Reb Shimon's view. If Reuven married Leah first, then the first prohibition was brother's wife. If Shimon married Rachel first, then the first prohibition was wife sister. And that's Reb Shimon's view. And Reb Yassi says, no, it's you uh, of two. Yeah. Now we challenge this. Rabbi Yisri really holds this a Um We have a problem with that. Turned out that Rava came in and said that Rabbi Yisri doesn't really hold that Yechai of two. You, Rava really holds you only Yechai of one. Why do we say Yechai of two? Because we consider it as if it's two prohibitions in, uh, regarding where we're going to bury him. And that means that he goes into the cemetery of the uh, of the wicked when he gets buried because it's considered like you violated two, even though um, for practical purposes you only violated one. In other words, if it was Bishagi, you would have one chatas or something, not two. Don't think it's people yeah, yeah. Someone that was that had capital punishment was put into a cemetery differently depending on which punishment he got. Yeah, or a different summer. Right. Okay, so we're, now we're saying that the Issa Kail of Ali Bader Originally, we said that Rabbi Yaisi didn't hold of Issa Kail, but now we're saying that yes. Rabbi Chia Sava Rabbi Yaisi Bissa Kail Machayev Tati. Rabbi Chia holds that Rabbi Yaisi holds that Issa Kail has, has um, two prohibitions. Remember the Issa Kail, the difference between Issa Kail and Issa Maisif was that an Issa Kail was when. We don't have more men prohibited to this woman because of the new prohibition. We only have more women that are included in the new prohibition. So what we were saying in our original case was Ruvain marries Laya. That means all the men are already prohibited from the original prohibition. Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zvolan are all brothers. And this is the brother's wife. Leah is the brother's wife. Then Shimon marries Rachel. Now, there's no more men that get prohibited because Shimon marries Rachel. But what does get what does happen to Shimon 
is that now Shimon becomes prohibited not only to Leo that he was originally prohibited to, but he's even prohibited now to the other sisters as well, Bilha and Zilpa and whatever. So there's more women that become prohibited. So the, there is an umbrella prohibition here called the Isser Kailo. And the question is, would that cover over a new, would that make a new prohibition over Leah also? That now there's two prohibitions on Leah. She was prohibited before because it's Ruvain's wife. Now she's prohibited because it's Shimon's wife's sister. So do we say that because there's now added women that become prohibited? So Rabbi Yassi says, yes, according to, uh, according to Rabbi Chiyo, Rabbi Yassi says, yes. And Bar Kapar says, no, it's only one, even according to Rabbi Yassi. My isakail ikahacha. Well, that's very nice, but you have to go through the three examples that you just said. What were the three examples? A non kayan that did service on Shabbos, a balmum that that uh, did malacha when he was tummy, that did avida when he was tummy, did avida in the basin of his tummy, and the non kayan that ate from a bird that was a malika that was killed with him. Those are three examples where we had the machlaikas, and we have to explain how all of those examples would be in Isser Kailal, and that's why Reb Chia says two, and Bar Kapara says one. If it's not going to work, then that's not going to be the explanation for, for this Machlechus. Kamara says like this. My Isser Kailal Kahacha. What is the Isser Kailal that you have here? Bishle Mazar. Okay, let's talk about the non kayan that does work in the base of Migdash on Shabbos. So Mi'ikara, Originally, originally is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, right? Before Shabbos, Shari bin Malacha, he's allowed to do work. Yeah, he's supposed to do work. But he can't work in the temple. Okay. So there is a prohibition already there from beforehand not to work in the temple. Asila Shabbos comes around Shabbos. It's now uh, Friday night, Shabbos morning. Miga de Kamitsar bin Malacha. What is he not allowed to do? Besides for the work in the temple, he's also not allowed to do other work outside the temple. That's an Isser Kailal. It's not, it's not more people that aren't allowed to do the same job. It's him not, allowing to, not allowed to do other jobs. And we want that to be an umbrella over the service in the temple as well that he wasn't allowed to do beforehand. That's called the Isser Kailal. Isser Kailal is not the act is having more prohibitions on it. Other people are now prohibited to do that act. Whoever was prohibited to do that act was always prohibited to do that act. Whoever wasn't the Kayan that was already there before Shabbos. The only thing that's happening with Shabbos is that other services, other activities are prohibited but not this activity itself. This activity itself was always prohibited. So we want to say that because other activities are prohibited, it should be an umbrella over the activity that was prohibited from beforehand. That's called the Isser Kailal. Okay, that sounds nice. That is Isser Kailal. Rabbi Chia would say too, according to Rabbi Yaisi, and Bar says one, Balmum mi karashari b'achila vaser b'avayda. A Balmum, some people don't realize this, but a Kayan that has a blemish, he's not allowed to serve in the temple, but it doesn't mean he doesn't eat from the food. He eats from the sacrifices. So he's originally he's allowed to eat from the sacrifices. That was permissible. He was not allowed to do the service. So the service was prohibited from before him. He was allowed to eat though. The reason why we're throwing in the concept of eating is because we want to say what's going to happen when he becomes Tame. So it me lay. Now he becomes Tame. Well, Migut commits Bachila. Now he's not allowed to eat sacrifices also. So we want to, what we're saying is there's side prohibitions that are taking effect, which this is how Isser Kailal works. We are, it's not more people becoming prohibited to the same act. It's more, it's side prohibitions for the same person. Yeah. In our case, back to to the original case, it was more women becoming prohibited to Shimon, not more brothers becoming prohibited to Leah. Yeah. So here we're saying there's more activities that are prohibited to the 
to the non to the to the balmon. What are those activities? You can't eat more. Uh, you can't eat the sacrifice. So we say like this: Migud the kamitz rabachila mitzanami ba'avayda. Yeah, it's it's a kail. Very good. So we're doing well. <laughs> we're working out the machlekes between Reb Chi and Bar Kapara that it has to do with Reb Yaisi's view about Isser Kailo. And Rebbe, who happens to be a student of um, Reb Yaisi actually, is telling Reb Chi and Bar Kapara what Reb Yaisi's opinion is. Yeah, Rebbe was a friend of Rebbe Shmuel Bar Reb Yaisi, Reb Yaisi's son. He was also a friend of Rebbe Lazar Bar Shimon, which is Reb Shimon, Reb Yaisi and Reb Shimon are the people arguing, the original Machlaikas. So, um, the only problem is Malika is not an Isser Kailo. What happens at Malika? Malika, there's two prohibitions that happen at the same time. It becomes the sacrifice, prohibited to a non kayan and it also becomes Nevela. So both of those happen simultaneously. It's not an Isser Kailal. Isser Kailal is one was prohibited first. And then there's a new prohibition that arises because of something new. It became Shabbos or it becomes Tame. And it includes other things as well. Here, it's a simultaneous act that with that Malika, it becomes a sacrifice prohibited to the non kayan and it becomes an Avela at the same moment. So the Gemara says, yeah, and it becomes permissible to the kayan. So the Gemara says, obviously, the Machlekes Rebchim Bar Kapara is not about Isser Kailal because we need all three to match the same logic. We have two, but we don't have the third one. Ela Kamithal Gibbis of Asachas Valib Dar Biesi. Aha, going to change the whole theory. The Machlekes here is about Isser Basachas. When two prohibitions simultaneously take effect on one item, that's a machlekes Reb Yaisi and Bar Kapara. That's what we're now going to figure out if this if this one is going to fit. Reb Chia Sava Reb Yaisi Bissav Asachas Machayiv Tarti. Reb Chia holds that Reb Yaisi holds two simultaneous prohibitions can happen at the same moment. Bar Kapara Sava Le Machayiv Alachada. Well, in order for this to make sense with our Gemara that we had previously, what's going to need to happen is that Ruvain and Shimon are going to need to marry Rachel and Leah at exactly the same moment. That is, um, yeah, not so probable. So Rashi says the way that you can work this out is that Reuven and Shimon both decided to send a messenger to marry Rachel and Leah at the same moment. Uh, not, no, to marry Rachel and Leah. To marry Rachel and Leah. Okay. Rachel and Leah um, decide to send a messenger to accept the Kedushin money, the two rings, um, from Reuven and Shimon. Now, both messengers meet up. Except two separate messengers, not a joint, two for one. Well, there's one messenger for Reuven and Shimon. It's a shliach l'haylacha, <laughs> to give the money. And then there's two, one messenger from Rachel and Laya, a shliach Kabbalah to receive the money. And the money gets exchanged both together together. So Ruvain marries Leah and Shimon marries Rachel at exactly the same moment right. when, with the handing over of that wallet to the messenger, who's then going to divide it between them. But the messenger received, at the moment the messenger received, they're both married. So that's a simultaneous prohibition of a brother's wife and a wife's sister on Shimon to Leah. That's okay. So Rabbi Yaisi is going to hold that that's two prohibitions, and Rabbi Shimon is going to say, a simultaneous prohibition is only one. How many caterers? Yeah, which one? How many caterers? <laughs> one caterer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and one, yeah, one rabbi. <laughs> right. Do we have that today? Like, do you have these mass They have um, these mass bar mitzvahs. Uh, that's when they have like um, in, the, in these organizations that they make a bar mitzvah for a lot of people together. But I weddings, have never heard of weddings like that. Right, right, right. They schedule it. Yeah. Did they have it at the time of uh, Tuba Av? They used to yeah, go that out could or be. Used to have that's a good mass. point. That could be. Yeah. yeah. 
That's a good point. So, now the Gemara is going to need to go through all three cases again to see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, we're going to have a problem. Okay, so we have to go through the three cases. I have a problem. There's a problem with this case. He was, a, he was not a Kayan before Shabbos. He was not allowed to do the service in the temple. He was not a Kayan before Shabbos. So the, the fact that he's not a Kayan, he's a Yisrael. He can't do the Malacha. He can't do the Avodah in the temple, even before Shabbos. Shabbos comes. He now has another prohibition. He's not allowed to do work on Shabbos. So how is the case we are, both are simultaneous. So the Gemara explains, interesting case. Going to Icy, He was a minor. And he brings, he, he does the work on Shabbos. Uh, the, the, however, when Shabbos comes in, he, he, he reaches puberty. He gets two uh, uh, hairs on Shabbos. So the prohibition of him working in the temple and the prohibition of Shabbos both occur when he reaches puberty. Because before that, he was a minor. Very interesting. Okay, if this is the case, you're going to be able to do this with every, uh, the whole Torah, right? You'll be able to make the whole Torah simultaneous, according to this, right? Let's see the next case. Balmum Nami. What's the case with the Balmum? Going to Isis, Te Saris, Vitmole, Davali Balmum, Vituma, Bahadi Adadi. The, the Balmum, he wasn't allowed to do the service. And he also became Tommy. And the question is, does that two prohibitions or, or is that just remain one? Like according to Bar Kapara. We say, well, he, he, um, he uh, gets two hairs, he reaches maturity after he's already a Balmum and after he's Tommy. So now both of them are simultaneous. Because before that he was a minor. Okay. Inami, another shot, another possibility. You know how he became a mum? The knife that cut his finger off, was a um, was Tame. So he became a Balmum and Tame with the same knife at the same moment. <laughs> No, I don't know if that's Tuma, if that's really Tuma, you mean because of the finger? The, yeah, I don't know. Okay. That's another example of a possibility of this. Okay. Fish in, all the options, in, in all the cases that we're talking about the simultaneous, it's always based on a single action that causes right. two things because there is no two actions that can be simultaneous. Right. So in all the cases, it's always one action that has multiple repercussions. Right. Right. The Gemara could have said that we're following Rabbi Yaisi, and Rabbi Yaisi holds Efshel at Samsim, where two actions could be at the same moment. That's Rabbi Yaisi's view, but that's a, a, you know, a unique view. And the Gemara, remember, Rabbi Yaisi, you, we mentioned it before. We had it actually recently. The Gemara says, did we just do all three? No, we didn't do the Malika. The Malika was obviously simultaneous. We, the Gemara doesn't need to go over that. The Malika, that's Nevela for the non kayan That was obvious. So we have all three now. The Gemara says, okay, you got all three. Everything sounds good. The only problem is, is that Reb Chia took an oath to, Reb, to Bar Kapara and Bar Kapara took an oath to Reb Chia. How is this going to work out like what mistake was made that this would work? So Bishlam al we understand Rabchia. Kiasnaya, how this was taught Lidi Day to him, that was a Liba de Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi tells Rabchia, Rabbi Yaisi holds that a Isr Basachas is high of two. What was Bar Kapara thinking? So in Rabchia's mind, Bar Kapara was thinking the following. Kiasnaya la Bar Kapara, Liba de Rabshimin. 
Rebbe taught Bar Kapara, according to Reb Shimon. I know Reb Shimon's view. Reb Shimon holds that an Yisr Basachas is only one. Bar Kapara didn't hear it clearly from Rebbe. He thought he was following, he was teaching him Rabbi Yaisi's view. So Rabbi Chia understands why Bar Kapara swore to him, even though he knows that he's right. How, why did he swear to me? Because Bar Kapara uh, was thinking that Rebbe was talking about Rabbi Yaisi's view, he was really talking about Rabbi Shimon's view. So he has an explanation for himself, and he has an explanation for the oath that Bar Kapara took. But if Bar Kapara thinks that Rebbe taught him Rabbi Yaisi, and Rabbi Yaisi holds that, even, even Rabbi Yaisi holds that it's only one, Basachas. How does he explain Rabbi Chia taking an oath? What does he think? Rabbi Chia is lying. The only way that we can explain how they both took an oath and they don't view each other as liars would be that we weren't, we weren't discussing the view of Rabbi Yaisi, we were discussing the view of Rabbi Shimon. We are, according to Rabbi Shimon, I, I, in other words, Rabbi Shimon said, you only chay of one, but that could be it wasn't the vasachas. What would Rabbi Shimon hold vasachas? Rabbi Chia would say that you chay of two. And now we can explain. It would go like this. What is Reb Chia swearing? <clears throat> you see, Reb Shimon said normally two Averis only get one prohibition. We hold, we, one prohibition can't fall on another prohibition. Comes along Reb Chia. It says, I'm gonna, I, I can swear to you, he says, that Reb Shimon holds that if it's Bavasachas, you have two. A change in what we assumed Reb Shimon would have hold, would have held. Ela Bar Kapara Lamalei but Bar Kapara that says that Reb Shimon holds that the only Chai of one. Why does he have to take oath? Reb Shimon always held that the Chai of one. Umar says Kasha. That's a good point. It's a good point. Reb Bar Kapara did not need to take an oath about that. That's what we always thought Reb Shimon held. Second problem. Bishlaim Ela Bar Kapara Ki Esnaya Rebbe Lidi Dayali Bid Reb Shimon. Bar Kapara understands, you know what, Reb Chia swore to me. Because he didn't hear Rabbi, he didn't hear Rebbe, Rabbi Yudha Nasi teaching him. He didn't hear that it was Reb Shimon that he was talking about. He thought that it was Rabbi Yaisi. No, I'm sorry. Why does he, he, he heard, Rebbe really taught Reb Chia, Reb Yaisi, not Reb Shimon. That's why it comes along Reb Chia and is saying that Yechayev too, because he thought that Rebbe was, because he thought Rebbe was talking about Reb Shimon, it was really talking about Reb Yaisi, which Reb Yaisi, even according to Bar Kapara, holds too. El Reb Chia, but according to Reb Chia, where Reb Chia says that I'm talking about Reb Shimon, and I'm, you still Chayev too, Bar Kapara, Shukuri Kamashakar. How does he explain Bar Kapara's view that Yechayev too and Reb Shimon? That, that, Yechayev, that Yechayev won in Reb Shimon. He heard Reb Yaisi saying in Reb Shimon that Yechayev too. There is no other view other than Reb Yaisi, which for sure holds two. So he thinks that Bar Kapar is lying. How does he think Reb Bar Kapar is lying? Bar Kapar just swore to him. Amalach Reb Chia, Reb Chia will explain. You know what's going on with Bar Kapara? Let me explain to you what's going on in Bar Kapara's mind. When Rebbe taught him that Yechayev won, he taught him two cases. Two cases, Yechayev. Which two cases? The two that are not simultaneous. Naturally simultaneous. Which is the non kayan that does the service on Shabbos in the temple and the Balmum that becomes Tame that does the service in the temple. Those are the 
those are not simultaneous naturally, unless you have a case of where he reached puberty uh, at, at, uh, on Shabbos or whatever, at, when he was tummy. Okay, now Reb Chia holds like this, that he's teaching him Reb Shimon. Reb Shimon, according to Reb Chia, is high of two if it's simultaneous, high of one if it's not simultaneous. So Bar Kapara hears the two cases that are not simultaneous, that Reb Shimon holds you high of one. Okay, he's right. The Isra is That was only an Isra Kailo. That was a, an added prohibition, not on the person, but on more items. We said that, we call that an Isra Kailo, but that's a Machlekes Reb Shimon and Reb Yais. I'll leave it to Reb Shimon. Now, here's where Bar Kapara makes a mistake. Bar Kapara says, you know what? I have another example of this. You know what the example is? Azar, I'm on top of uh, 33b. Azar, uh, a non kayan that eats the bird that was slaughtered by the nape of the neck with the kayan's fingernail. It's a very similar case. The only difference is is that that's a simultaneous case. The others were not simultaneous. So Bar Kapara says that this case would be exactly the same, and you're only high of one. But afterwards, he looked into it, and he realized, that's not an Isra Kailo, that's the Isra Basachas. The Savar, and then Bar Kapara realized that if the Zar Sha'achal B'Malika, Rebbe says one, According to Reb You see, because he added in an extra case, that case was slightly different. He then goes back and understands the other cases that they were all bevasachas. Now, there's the additional case that Bar Kapara added in changes the logic of all the other cases. And then he thinks that all the other cases have that other logic. And all of them were vasachas, and therefore Reb Shimon holds that the only high of one, even by Vasachas. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like Chava. You know, she added in, you can't touch it. And then you see that, oh, you can, obviously you can't touch it. And then you probably, right, that's what happened over here. Bar Kapara added in the case of the Malika. That's a case of Vasachas. Then he sees that Rib Shimon holds, according to that, according to the new case that he just added, that Rib Shimon holds Vasachas is one. Then he goes back to the other cases and he says Rib Shimon holds one by Vasachas. Okay. That Rib Shimon only holds Yechai of one, even by Vasachas. So that Rib Chia would explain Bar Kapara's mistake. Meisve, the Gemara is a question. It says like this. Zor Shashimish Bishabbos, Benan Koyen. Yisrael does service in the te- in the temple on Shabbos. A balmum shashimish betuma, and a balmum, a koyen. That's a balmum. He doesn't. Ha- he's uh, he's uh, blemished. He can't do the service, and he does. He's also tummy. Yesh kam mishum zaras, mishum Shabbos, mishum balmum, mishum tuma div Reb Yosi. You have all the prohibitions there. That's Reb Yosi's view. Rab Shimon Aimer Inkan El Mishum Zaras Mishum Balmum Bavad. Rab Shimon says you only have the original prohibitions. He wasn't a Kayan, and he's also the uh, or and the other person wasn't uh, was a uh, Balmum was a blemish. The Tumah that came later, and Shabbos that came later, that doesn't have a pro that doesn't add any prohibition. Now the Ilam Malika Sharia, he doesn't discuss Malika. Shire, it leaves it out. It means that means that there's no machlekes. They're going to agree about about Malika. Laman Shire, for according to whom did they leak it out? Did they leave this out? So ile malir In other words, is everyone agreeing? Is Rabbi Yaisi going to agree? That it's only one. He's going to agree to Reb Shimon by Malika. Even if it's not simultaneous, Reb Yaisi holds that it's two, two prohibitions. 
when it is simultaneous, Rabbi Yossi is going to hold that it's only one? Doesn't make sense. Can't be that Rabbi Yossi admits to Rabbi Shimon that it's only one. Ella Lavla Rabbi Shimon. It must be Rabbi Shimon is going to agree to, to Rabbi Yossi that Yechayev too, Babasachas. And that's why we left it out. You know what's happening right now is that we're seeing that Reb Shimon really holds that by an Isra Kailal, that's where Yechayev won. Why did we leave out the, the case of Malika? Because Reb Shimon would agree that if it's the Isra Basachas, if it's, a, if it's simultaneous, he would hold that Yechayev too. Aha, Tifta the Barkapara Tifta. This is a very strong question, Barkapara. Barkapara said that Rip Shimon agrees uh, that Rip Shimon would hold that a simultaneous prohibition is also only one. Mm. And here we're seeing that the fact that we left out the simultaneous one, that because Rip Shimon would agree to Rabbi Yaisi that Yechayev too. That was a machlaikis Rip Chi and Barkapara. We just proved Rip Chi correct. Okay. Yeah, it seems like that uh, we don't have an answer for that. Okay, now we're going to go to Chaim. This we're going to explain um, what's the case exactly. What malacha was done? What avoda was done on Shabbos? Zor shishimish b'Shabbos b'Mai. You told me about a non kayan that's doing the service in the temple, and you're telling me that he originally wasn't a kayan. He was not allowed to do the service in the temple. Now it's Shabbos. He's for sure not allowed to do the service. He's not allowed to do any malacha. We're going to say that according to Rabbi Yossi, Yechayev 2, according to Rabbi Shimon, Yechayev 1, um, and according to Rabbi Yechayev 2, according to Bar Kapar, Yechayev 1, depending on who they're arguing on. So that was another discussion. Ibe Shechita. Are you talking about Shechita? Shechita Ksher Bazar. Shechita Bazar Ksher. He's allowed to do Shechita. A non kayan doesn't need to be a kayan. That can't be the case. Ibe Kabbalah, maybe it's receiving the blood. Vahailacha, or walking the blood up to the temple, or walking to, to the altar. That's uh, considered one of the Avaidas, Machlekes in the first Mishnah, Zvachim. Sorry. So, Tiltul Balmahu, that's not a Malacha. That's not prohibited on Shabbos to carry blood from one place to another. That's maybe Mukta, but it's not a, it's just moving something. Ibak Tara, ah. He's burning the offerings on the altar. We have a good shot. That's what's happening. It's prohibited on Shabbos. Umar says, We have a, uh, 39 malachas on Shabbos. The Torah specifies one of them. You're not allowed to burn on Shabbos. There's a machlekes between Rabbi Yaisi and Rabbi Nassim, I think. But why the Torah specifies that? Rabbi Yaisi says to tell me, that you're not chayev on burning on Shabbos. It's only a negative prohibition and it's not a, it's not b'shegig uh, chatas. You're discussing shitas Reb Yaisi here. You're telling me that Reb Yaisi holds at Yechayev too. But if you're burning on Shabbos, Reb Yaisi never holds Yechayev too. Amr Avacha Bar Yaakov, B'shitas Parish Al-Kayin Gadol, Kedivri Yem, B'shitas Parish Al-Kayin Gadol, B'zor P'sula. We're talking about shita. I, a non kayan is allowed to do shechita. We said we're dealing with the cow of the kayan gadol, Anyam Kippur, that needs to be shechted by the kayan gadol. This is the one example that we found that, and it's on Shabbos, that it that really wouldn't matter. It's also Yom Kippur. But um, the one example that we found that a non kayan is not allowed to do the shechita. It says, Yehachiyaf, but my ear is so the why do you say he's not a kayan? I feel a kayan head It could be a kayan. As long as it's not the kayan godly, you have the same prohibition. The Gemara says, well, when we said a czar, we didn't mean that he's not a kayan. We meant he was a stranger to that service. Shazaretz like Amar. So even if he is a kayan, he's still considered a czar because only the kayan godly was allowed to do it. Maskifla Ravashi midichatas katani. Ravashi says, one second. Your whole assumption here, why did you need to say that it was shrita? was because in the Kunpi Havara was because you think we're dealing with a carbon chatas. And we said, according to Rabbi Yaisi, there is no chatas if it's haktara, if it's burning. We never mentioned that it's a chatas. You said two, but you didn't mean two karbanas. Maybe we're talking about prohibitions. We talk about 
<coughs> the negative prohibitions. We're only saying that it's prohibited. What's the difference if it's prohibited if you don't have to bring two chatois? Where we're going to bury him? We're going to, which cemetery we're going to bury him? Therefore, we could say that it's dealing with Haktara and it's still not going to bring two chatois because Rabbi Yesi holds for burning, you don't bring another chatois. Um, and it only has to do with if he can be buried in, uh, in the cemetery of the other people. That would be according to Rabshimin and not according to Rabbi Yesi. Okay, let's leave it over here.